Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to That Triathlon Show, the podcast presented by scientifictriathlon.com. I'm your host, Michael, and this episode is Q&A number 17. As always, if you have questions that you want me to answer on the podcast, send them to my email, michael at scientifictriathlon.com, and that's Michael with a K, or send them on Facebook through my website, scientifictriathlon.com. You'll find the widget in the bottom right corner. Big thanks before we get into today's questions to our sponsors. First, we have Retool. Retool bike fits makes riding more enjoyable because you can increase your comfort on the bike, reduce the chance of injury, and even become more efficient while you're cycling. In a Retool bike fit, you not only get your bike fit to, to your individual anatomy and riding style, but it's also a way that you get to learn about your body and the root cause of any aches and pains that you may have while riding. And you get all sorts of education around how a proper bike fit will help you achieve your triathlon and cycling goals. And I am personally somebody who uses Retool bike fits. That was uh, when I moved to Portugal and needed somebody to uh, to give me bike fits here. That was the first place I went to on Google. Retool Lisbon was what I entered into the, the search engine. And uh, then I found the Retool Experience Center here. Went there and uh, never looked back. It's been brilliant. Both the bikes that I currently race on, I've had fitted here. But uh, wherever you are in the world, you can go to retool.com forward slash TTS and that will help you find your nearest Retool bike fitter and uh, learn more and schedule an appointment. Again, that's retool.com forward slash TTS to learn more and Retool is spelled R-E-T-U-L. Also, a big thanks to Hit Science. So you heard very recently in episode 163, Paul Larson being back for his third interview that was called Intro Training Science and Application Part 3. And we discussed his and Martin Boucher's new book, Science and Application of High Intensity Intro Training, and also the HIT Science course. If you are a coach, a sports science student, or a sports scientist, or even an athlete that wants to make sure that you get the most out of your training, then this course may be just what you need to get the leg up on the competition, whether it's you as an athlete trying to beat your rivals in the next race, or as a coach trying to be the best coach you can be and attract more coaching clients, or as a sports scientist getting that next grant. I am taking this course right now. Uh, I was uh, very fortunate to get early access to it, and uh, I just completed the first week's lectures which are already up, and I'm really chomping at the bit to get further into it. The enrollment period is uh, from the 22nd of January through the 31st of January, so mark your calendars and uh, don't delay. Paul and Martin do not know when they will open it next, I asked, and uh, that's not clear at the moment, so do not miss out in this enrollment. You can read all about the course by going to scientifictriathlon.com forward slash H-I-I-T that will redirect you to the HIT Science course webpage and that's where you can enroll and full disclosure if you do sign up through that link I get an affiliate commission it does not cost you anything extra but if you want to sign up outside of that you can just go directly to hitscience.com instead Either way, if you fall into any of those categories that I mentioned above, or perhaps even being a sports science student that want to, again, get a leg up on the competition, then I can't recommend this resource warmly enough. As I said, I'm getting early bird access, and it's absolutely fantastic work that Paul and Martin has put together. So really, really warmly recommend it. All right, let's get to the questions for this episode. And it's actually one question because I have quite a long answer to it. And this one is from Alex in the UK. He writes, one topic I've never really heard any podcast talk about is uh, what you can do to heal any minor or even some bigger injuries you pick up while training. It's something that I'm sure will impact every triathlete at any level. So it would be really useful if you could help with that. I live in England, and if I went through the NHS for treatment, I'd be waiting months to see any kind of specialist by which point my season would be over, and I don't have enough disposable income to spend on private healthcare, so I feel like I have to be an expert in healing myself reasonably quickly. 
I've heard you talk about your knee before, so are there any specific tips or general rules you could share other than the usual rice method? Personally, I've had great success using a combo of lacrosse ball work, as guided by the book Becoming a Supple Leopard, and massaging with uh, comfrey oil, at the same time as drinking turmeric and ginger uh, milk slash tea for its anti-inflammatory effects. I'd love to hear of any other tried and tested methods and what sorts of injuries they would help. Also, how soon after the injury should you begin any self-administered massage or any rehab or movement, etc.? All right, thanks for this uh, question, Alex. Uh, it's uh, it's a really good one. So I will definitely give you some tips of uh, tried and tested things that you can do yourself, a few of them. Uh, but uh, first, let me talk about a related episode. So we have covered this in in a way in on the podcast before. That was in episode 114. It was called Injury Prevention and Recovery Methods for Triathletes with uh, Nate Coke. And uh, so definitely go and check that out. I'll link to it in the episode description. Also, by the time of this recording, I'm one day away from interviewing British Triathlon's lead physiotherapist, Emma Deakin, and that episode may be out in perhaps a month or a bit more than a month or so, so around mid-February, late February. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, Second, before getting into the methods, I have to admit, humbly admit that I do not know the specifics of your injuries, uh, nor your personal finances. Uh, so, so I don't want to come across as, in, as insensitive. That's uh, that's not what I intend to do. But a couple of things that you that you say state in your question, they do raise some some warning flags for me. And first, let's uh, talk about going through the NHS to see a specialist. So, I'm not uh, from the UK, of course. Personally, I do know just at a very base level. I have a vague idea of what the NHS is, but. If I'm correct, that's where where you go to actually see doctors, medical doctors, or nurses, psychotherapists, but people that actually work in medicine. And it's not necessarily so much focused on athletics. And I'm not kidding when when I say that around 60% of my working relatives are doctors or starting to become doctors or things like that. So I do have great respect for them. But I have found that very, very rarely is uh, is a medical doctor the person that you should visit for your injuries. Even if you have, let's say, a leg injury, uh, you might think that it makes sense to go to an orthopedic doctor. That's uh, that's usually something that is uh, not a plan A or pr- not even a plan B, but perhaps a plan C. At least eight times out of ten, you should see a physiotherapist. That, that should be your go-to. And you do not have to wait for that. I'm sure in the UK there are definitely enough of them around and uh, it typically doesn't break the bank either uh, so personally you you asked about my knee for example and uh, and i have seen plenty of physiotherapists and also at least three orthopedic doctors for my knee during the various bouts of the injury that i've had and uh, and in my experience it has been very easy to find great very very knowledgeable physiotherapists who actually made a big difference and helped me get back to health but uh, the success rate with the orthopedic doctors has been much poorer with only one out of three seeming to even know what they were talking about that that one orthopedic doctor was actually really really great and helped me a lot but the two others uh, not not at all I, actually i i got zero help from them so and of course i'm not just basing this recommendation for physiotherapists about medical doctors just on personal experience but on plenty of of stories from uh, from other athletes and coaches and, and people in triathlon in general so again without knowing quite what your injury issues are at the moment or have been or maybe in the future if i would have to make a guess uh, it would be that you probably do not need a medical doctor through the nhs but you should go and see a, a physiotherapy practitioner and that would be private but it would not be typically very expensive at all and nor would it be require a long waiting time so so i think that's the first and most important thing that i that i will say here uh, the second thing before getting into some of the the methods as for not having the disposable income I mean, I I may be wrong here. Again, I do not want to come across as insensitive. But since you are a triathlete, you are doing triathlon. 
I, I think you do have disposable income because this is a sport that like it requires you to have a, a little bit of disposable income. You don't need to be rich to to do it, of course, but. Uh, but it's it costs some money you you have to spend money on on some things like even if it's just race entries and and the thing is that it's it's a matter of prioritization rather than uh, than having disposable income or not if you are going to be a triathlete then it's something that you you have to expect that you need to invest a little bit in your body and keeping your body healthy ideally you should invest that in terms of injury prevention rather than, than injury rehabilitation and that's one of my main learnings from my many different bouts of injury that I have not done that previously as well as I should have at least. And uh, that ended up costing me a lot of time and a lot of money. So you could invest just a little in injury prevention up front and, uh, or you could invest a lot down the line when you get injured. So, but of course, if you are injured, then it's better to invest that as soon as possible because it only, it will only get more difficult and it will only require a, a longer rehab if you end up waiting uh, to to get treatment and getting the right diagnosis so so when it comes to prioritization like again consider i, th- I think it's more of a mindset issue than than a budgeting issue you need to be fully aware and fully bought into the idea that you are completely utterly dependent on your body being healthy and fully functioning if you want to be a triathlete if that means you skip one race and uh, do one race less per season so be it if that means that you do not buy any new training clothes or gadgets etc then so be it i mean training clothes you can get that for dirt cheap at the nearest supermarket you don't need anything more fancy than that gadgets you don't need anything you i I would rather you do not wear a watch at all and by that i mean even the most basic watch if that means that you can invest the the amount required so that you can actually train with full health Uh, you, you will have no joy of any of those gadgets or clothes or whatever even race entries if you are if if you are injured and you don't have that healthy body so that you can go out and train and you can go out and race so so you should steer your funds and your investments in triathlon even if they are at a low level but you should steer them towards making sure that you have a healthy body and getting your body healthy if you are currently injured and that means yes you need to deprioritize other things even including races if need be even if that's uh that's perhaps the, the last resort because races at the end of the day that's uh, that's one of the main reasons that we do the sport not necessarily to to be competitive with others but that's just where we go out and i guess uh reap the rewards for for our labor in training uh, so so to give another example and this one is perhaps uh, a little bit uh less intuitive uh, because i think that you probably it's pretty easy to see why you should should uh, steer your financial investments in the sport from gadgets to getting your body healthy but another example a very high value high roi investment in triathlon that you could make is to get a swim video analysis Uh, we talked about that uh, several times on this podcast before that is one of the highest roi return on investment things that you could invest in as a triathlete but let's say hypothetically that you have uh, a knee injury that allows you to swim but not bike or run that was my situation this time last year uh, then even though you could uh, swim and you could swim fully and, and try to work on your swim and improve it you should do that i'm not saying that but that means also that if you are committed to that process of improving your swim while you're rehabbing your your knee so that you can get back to running and cycling there is uh there, there could be the put the the theoretical possibility that you go out and invest in a swim video analysis and if that is going to prevent you i mean i'm not saying that that's a bad idea at all i think that's a great idea but if that is something that you prioritize above of actually getting treatment for the injury then your priorities are wrong you need to fix the the knee or the injury whatever the injury the injury may be first and focus on anything else second and uh, and if you need to budget carefully then uh, skip that video analysis even if it's a fantastic investment in most cases it is not if that means that something that is more important in other words getting healthy gets deprioritized Another thing that I think is very important to be aware of is that especially if you are carrying an injury and uh, trying to rehab an injury, then one session with whoever it may be, and that goes for whether it's a physiotherapist or a medical doctor or uh, something else, 
one session is probably it's rarely going to be enough that there would be a very rare case when you go and do one session and then you get the perfect recipe to get back to health and uh, then you get healthy that's that's not how it works in the real world you need you have to expect an ongoing commitment to regular sessions for a while while you're rehabbing your injury and that is why it's so much better to invest up front in getting a massage every now and then getting a yearly checkup with a physiotherapist because those things will be super cheap in comparison to going and seeing the physiotherapist once per week or 12 week period or something like that and again this is from personal experience i've done that mistake uh, a couple of times at least so believe me i'm not trying to waste your money i'm trying to save you money here and one final point, uh, this is about the, the time course uh, that you ask about as well, when, when you should start. Uh, so by waiting and trying to fix the niggle or the injury yourself, you do not likely have the expertise to assess yourself and see what the know what the injury is and diagnose it know how you should treat it what the only thing you can do is to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks and sometimes it might be uh, it might be something that you need to do but that's not something that you should do yourself you might need to go to different uh, different sort of treatment modalities and that's what i did last year when i had my knee injury I went to a chiropractor, I went to a massage therapist slash physiotherapist, he did both of those things, and I went to acupuncture. And I did all of those three at the same time. And uh, eventually uh, I got healthy through that. And I don't know, I can't attribute me getting healthy to any of those particular modalities. I don't know what actually works, but it's likely that it's a combination of them. Uh, so, But the, the point here is that... Uh, that if you just go about it yourself with uh, self-massage, lacrosse ball, and uh, ginger tea, I mean, for very minor injuries and niggles, uh, assuming that you also r give the injury rest and you rise, so you rest and ice, etc., as you say, it might work. But if it's anything more than a minor niggle, then what is likely going to happen is that you, you end up making it, it's, it gets worse and it gets more difficult to rehab. Uh, in the long run, it will take you longer to to rehab it properly. Whereas if you see a good uh, physiotherapist right away, it's so much easier for them to help you fix it. Perhaps in as little as maybe even one session, but uh, perhaps more likely two sessions or or at most three sessions. Whereas if you try to fix it yourself and you fail and the injury ends up getting worse in the meantime, then you might be in for that much longer rehab, like one session per week for 12 weeks, kind of thing before you see the results and that costs you of course both time you lose 12 weeks of of great training uh, and uh, and money of course so again i spent well over 1000 euros due to making this mistake on on a couple of occasions and uh, now that i'm healthy rather than keep doing that i spend a small amount every month to uh, get a massage or two and uh, and keep seeing my chiropractor and uh, that has kept me healthy now since uh, may of last year so and i'm more than happy to make that investment because it's uh, my body's what's most important to me as a triathlete i don't spend a lot on uh, i don't spend anything on things like gadgets very rarely do i go out and buy new training clothes that sort of thing i mean the t-shirts last forever and you get new ones every race or so anyway so so i save a lot in in other areas but i do not save on keeping my body healthy that's uh, that's something that i prioritize i pri prioritize it above almost everything else uh, or together with with having a coach and, and getting coaching help ex uh, externally as well like going and getting those swim video analysis so again i want to be clear i i'm not telling you how to what you should do i don't know the context of your situation what your injury is but i've seen this and heard about uh, from other athletes and coaches that this is a story that repeats itself itself time and time again with a lot of athletes again myself included you think that you can fix it yourself, that it's going to get well if you just foam roll, you ice it, you lacrosse ball it, you rest, and uh, then it ends up not happening. You lose a lot of time, and then in the end, you have just have to go and see that physiotherapist that uh, that helps you get you right. But then by that time, the the injury is is more serious than it than it was before, and it ends up taking more time, costs more money. So so I want to try to help you avoid that sort of situation. Now, if we get into the tried and true methods that you ask for, uh, then 
I'll take, again, a slightly different angle because prevention here is the best strategy and uh, not rehabilitation. As, as I said, when you have an injury, uh, you have very few choices other than go to see a physiotherapist if you want to do it right. Uh, but uh, prevention is, some, is a place where you can do a lot of things to make sure that you don't get injured in the first place. The first thing here is that you need to have the right training program that balances volume and intensity to a level that is right for you and your body and what it can handle. So this means that the more injury prone you are, the more important it becomes that you have a coach that actually uh, looks at you as an individual and adapts your training, your program for you individually. For very resilient athletes, uh, off-the-shelf programs can work really, really well, especially if uh, these athletes maybe don't have time to train as much as their body could handle. Like they might be time limited to 10 hours per week, but their body can actually ha handle 15 to 20 hours per week. So there's a lot of margin there. But, uh, and, and vice versa, if you are somebody who can train 15 to 20 hours and you do train 15 to 20 hours, then it's important that you have that oversight from a coach to make sure that the balance is right and that you get some that you get rest appropriately when needed to to make sure that you don't fall off that racer's edge and and do too much to to get injured. Second, make sure that your technique is good and this applies for running, swimming and cycling, all three disciplines. Uh, if you have sound proper technique, the risk of getting injured is so much so much smaller. Third, make sure you have a great bike fit. Uh, so again, uh, plug to the sponsor Retool here. They do great bike fits, but of course there are other bike fitters that do great bike fits as well. So uh, the, there's plenty of options wherever you live. Uh, the next one is uh, change running shoes frequently enough. So this is something that you need to do. This is again a mistake I used to make in the past, especially when I was a runner. I was too cheap to replace my running shoes and then I ended up paying multiples of those running shoe costs in physiotherapy costs instead but you should change them every five to six hundred kilometers or so ideally you also want to alternate running shoes so perhaps you have one pair of shoes that you use every other day and uh, and another pair that you use on every other day or every other workout or you could perhaps have a, a separate pair of shoes for faster workouts and a separate one for more endurance workouts and longer workouts Next, do at least a yearly checkup with a good physiotherapist with the knowledge of endurance athletes and triathletes. And this yearly checkup will just make sure that you, you get some preventive exercises that you can do to make sure that any, any warning flags that may arise from your assessment, and more likely than not, you will have warning flags. That doesn't mean that you will get injured, but the physiotherapist will point those things out and that will help you be aware that, for example, Okay, your shoulder mobility isn't great, so perhaps you should do a little bit less work with uh, with paddles on the swim, or your hip uh, mobility is poor, so you need to work on that before your run. So do a little bit of foam rolling and a little bit of dynamic hip stretching before your runs, and that will greatly reduce your risk of injuries. Getting those insights, and you can do that just once per year, that is invaluable, absolutely invaluable. So investing in that yearly checkup is something that you must do, in my opinion. And next, do mobility work. And you can do this in particular before runs and swims that uh, require a high degree of mobility. Uh, but you can also do it as standalone sessions. That's great to do in the evening in front of the TV if you watch TV. Uh, and uh, you can do it in conjunction with strength sessions uh, for the athletes that I coach and with the strength training program that, uh, that I have on my website. Uh, mobility is included in the warm-up routine of that strength training program so that means that uh, yeah if if the athlete is doing the program then they are also doing mobility so so that's a good way uh, that i can make sure that my athletes actually do mobility work at least to some extent and uh, speaking of strength training strength training is another great way to prevent injuries there's plenty of research backing that up and uh, finally stretching may help uh, but this is really dependent on what you, your individual constraints and limiters actually are. Because in some cases, stretching is just a waste of time. So for you to know whether it makes sense to do that or not, you, you need to consult a physiotherapist to see if it makes sense for you. Of course, books like the one you mentioned uh, and uh, 
I would add Running Rewired by Jay Dishari. Uh, that's uh, my favorite resource in, in that area. They can help, but no book will make your self-prescription even nearly as good as that of a good physiotherapist. So uh, so this is something where I would, I, I would not waste my time on that unless I had the prescription of a physiotherapist that, hey, this is something that you need to do and this is how you should do it. So if you do have an injury or a niggle, there are a few tried and tested methods that I would recommend. And uh, as for the timeline, again, immediately. You need to start as soon as you have that injury. And also, don't be afraid to take an extra rest day and uh, actually not, in, not trying to train through the injury, but, but resting, because that goes a long way to making sure that, uh, that you can be back healthy sooner rather than later if you combine that with with these methods and uh, hopefully seeing a physiotherapist. But again, if you get just a small niggle, I'm not saying that you need to go and see a physiotherapist the same day or the next day, but that's perhaps when you decide to take a rest day from perhaps, let's say you get a running niggle, but you can bike and swim without problems. Well, then take uh, take a few days off running where you just swim and bike and do these methods that we will discuss and some of them you already do. And then if it's still not good after a few days, that's when you need to, like within the first week, but but you can give it a few days to see if it's just a short niggle that will go away. So I hope that clarifies sort of what the timeline and the time course there is for when you should see, when you should start rehab, that is immediately, that you get a niggle and you should immediately take a little time off. Uh, but uh, as for the physiotherapist, wait just a few days to see if the niggle goes away when you do these things. So... Uh, so okay, okay, the methods that you mentioned already, RICE, that stands for, for those not uh, familiar, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. And uh, I think, in my personal opinion, the first two are by far the most important, resting, and that is actually the number one, by far most important, and icing is uh, by far the number two over compression and elevation. Ice is really good. You can apply ice to to an injury, let's say, 10 minutes per day, 10 to 15 minutes per day, three times per day. And that uh, that is very, very helpful in many cases. Compression and elevation, uh, I guess it could help. Like, to be totally honest, I never do that myself when I have niggles. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and I think that for compression, at least, there is some research and... Uh, there is nothing really to indicate that it can help with injury prevention as far as, or injury rehab, sorry, as far as I'm aware. But uh, it might help. Uh, there, I've, I'm sure there are a lot of anecdotal case studies, and that's not to be completely dismissed either. So, so those two are good too. Like, that definitely doesn't hurt to use compression and elevation, but I would definitely prioritize resting and icing. Other than that, uh, it makes sense to use the lacrosse ball as you do, or just a regular foam roller. The lacrosse ball, of course, is better if you want if you need to get a bit deeper, and then definitely that's the place where you can use a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball. And uh, this can help if the cause, the root cause of the injury, is uh, some uh, tightened fascia that you need to just re- release, do some myofascial release. So, uh, so that it makes sense to try that. It again, it probably isn't going to hurt. If those methods don't solve the is- issue, then uh, I mean. I, I don't go any further than that. Those are the things that I do, and there's nothing more than I can do. I just go and see a physio that I trust and get the diagnosis, get the prescription, and then I follow that prescription from the physio. So I think that uh, if those things don't work and you're not niggle-free within a few days, then you can try different methods until you're blue in the face. But uh, again, that is just such a gamble on time and money, and uh, that is why I want to steer you well clear of that route. So I don't know if this was exactly the answer that you wanted, Alex, but I feel quite confident that it is actually the answer that you need. And and that might be true for others as well. Uh, it certainly is for me, or myself. I have made all of these mistakes many times before. So, so I speak from experience with this. And that experience includes the pain of losing months and months where I haven't been able to train and uh, well over 1,000 euros in unnecessary costs for different treatments that I would not have needed to to take had I actually invested up front in injury prevention and also when I got injured being a lot more quicker to react and get the treatment that I needed seeing the physiotherapist right away rather than trying to fix it myself which is what I did uh, so that's perhaps the the exact specifics of that might be the topic for another episode perhaps 
but uh, I'll let this uh, suffice for now, and uh, I hope that it was helpful. So uh, this wraps it up for today's question, and I'll link in the episode description to episode 163 with uh, Paul Larson from Hit Science, and I'll link to episode 114 with Nate Koch, that is the, the injury prevention and recovery methods episode that I mentioned, and also to Running Rewired, which is a, a great book on prevention rather than rehab. And it's not just injury prevention, it's actually also just learning to run more efficiently and actually becoming a better runner and improving performance. But Running Rewired is a great book that is uh, related to this episode, I think. So I highly recommend that. One quick house cleaning item uh, before we ra- wrap up. I get questions every week about when I will launch an Ironman training plan. And it is uh, well on its way. I'm uh, finishing it very, very soon. I don't have an exact launch day yet, but uh, by the time that next Thursday's Q&A comes out, which uh, would be around about the 24th of January, it may already be out or soon after. Towards the end of January 2019, it should be out. And as usual, I will have a launch promo where you can get the plan for a crazy discount during the first couple of weeks of it being available. So stay tuned for that if you're looking for an Ironman training plan. Finally, big thanks to our sponsors, Hit Science. With the help of the HIT Science course, you'll get in-depth knowledge into understanding the science and the physiological response of high-intensity interval training and how to actually apply it in practice in triathlon, as well as across various other sports. Visit scientifictriathlon.com forward slash HIIT to learn more and enroll in the enrollment window, which is only January 22nd through 31st. And big thanks to Retool. Learn more about the Retool bike fit process and find a Retool bike fitter near you on retool.com forward slash TTS. That's R-E-T-U-L dot com forward slash TTS as in that triathlon show. All this will be linked to in the episode description as well. Thank you as always for listening. Keep training smart and keep loving triathlon.